since the first description um, by the group from Boston that uh, OCT angiography is also applicable to the optic disc and is in, could be interesting for glaucoma, glaucoma guys also became interested in OCT angiography. What happens with the optic disc and the peripapillary retina with OCT angiography glaucoma? On the left-hand side, you see a, a patient, a normal person, with a nice peripapillary um, network in the OCT angiography. With the beginning glaucoma stage two after Jonas and the thinning of the neural rim in the, superior, in the inferior temporal area, you see also uh, beginning capillary dropouts in the OCT angio. And if the disease continues as in a later stage in this person of the right hand side, you see uh, dark areas of capillary dropout in glaucomas. This was also described by the group from San Diego in 2016, and they nicely correlated the capillary dropout in the superficial layer of the peripapillary retina with uh, visual field defects. Here we see a, pa a patient with no normal tension glaucoma and severe um, loss of neurotor rim in the superior temporal and superior inf and in the inferior temporal area. Please appreciate the visual field effects, and you see the loss of rim in the BMO MRW analysis and the return nerve fiber layer analysis. Also, the ganglion cells in the macula have been lost in the superior half um, substantially. When we correlated to this, um, OCT angiography superficial capillary plexus, you see the dropout in the temporal superior and inferior temporal area. And also changes in the macular area. So the circularity of the uh, fovular avascular zone has gone, and the capillar density in the macular and the superficial layers also dropped down. This has been also described by other colleagues in the literature, and they could show that in the area of the macula, far away from the optic disc in glaucoma, there happen to be changes in the, uh, in the cause of the disease of progressing glaucoma. They found changes in the fovea avascular zone. The area became larger and the circularity index became lower. So when you look at the ROC curves, you see that the circularity index of the fovea avascular zone is not as uh, is a little bit worse than the structural measurements of the nerve fiber layer and the macular inner plexiform layer and ganglion cell complex measurements. In this patient with beginning glaucoma due to pseudoexfoliation, we see that the patient has a preparametric disease with no lo loss of sensitivity in the visual field, but we see in the nerve fiber layer analysis that he has a progressing loss of retinal nerve fiber layer. As indicated on the right-hand side with the red areas where the patient is losing nerve fiber layer in the nasal inferior area. When we look into OCT angiography, we realize that at the same position, at the 7 o'clock position, there is a loss of capillary network in the superficial area and this before even the nerve fiber layer structure flags out. So this is a rather interesting finding that the capillary network may show us some damage before the structure goes down. And similar, this was reported also by the colleagues, Akil and colleagues. They investigated pre very early glaucoma cases with OCT angiography and correlated them to controls and to open angle glaucoma patients. What they found is that in, when you compare controls with pre glaucoma patients, that the peripapillary area vessel density um, was significantly different even in this very, very early stage of glaucoma. So that they conclude that eyes with a mild open angle glaucoma can be differentiated from pre parametric glaucoma eyes before the beginning of parametric field defects by OCT angio. That's a very interesting point. But there are also 
changes in the deep choroidal network, not also in the superficial peripapillary vasculature, but also in the zone uh, belonging to the um, peripapillary choroid zone. You see in our patients, I, saw, I showed you in the beginning, that the zones um, change with the progression of the disease, and the dark areas in the choroid um, um, seem to increase with the progressing stage of the disease. And this was again shown in the literature by the group from San Diego showing so-called capillary, um, deep capillary dropouts in the choroid in the zone beta where the pigmented epithelium is lost and the laser easily can image the, and the subtlers and, and handless layer. So they conclude in their work that the thinning of the retinal nerve fiber layer and the thinning of the choroidal thickness is um, correlated with this um, deep dropouts in the choroidal meshwork. But there are also other forms of um, optic atrophy, as we heard from um, my colleague before. There's also the simple optic atrophy due to neuritis, for example, or optic atrophy due to um, other diseases. And also in these diseases, in OCTA, the capillary density drops down. So just by looking at the capillary density, you can't tell whether you have to deal with a glaucoma person or with another form of optic atrophy. You have to watch first the optic nerve head, come to a decision that it's a glaucoma patient, and then I think you can start to use OCT angiography in everyday diagnosis. But OCT angio is even influenced by the therapy of our patients. The therapy in glaucoma is, of course, lowering the eye pressure to stop progression. And Gabo Hollow from Hungary showed in his um, publication from 17 um, eyes before and after pressure lowering surgery, before, after, before, and after. And what you see is that the capillary density increases after lowering the intraocular pressure. So capillary density imaging is influenced by the intraocular pressure after surgery or after the treatment. You have to keep that in mind for the clinical work. And also eye drops seem to influence the capillary density. In this work from Chiha, they compared um, eye drops treatment with bimonidine, alpha, alpha 2 agonist with a ripazodil, a ROC2 inhibitor, rather new substance. And what they found is that um, after the application of the ROC inhibitor, the capillary density increased, which did not happen with the alpha-2 agonist. Although the intraocular pressure drop was higher after the alpha-2 agonist, and was not as high as in the ROC inhibitor, but somehow the ROC inhibitor had an influence on our OCTA imaging. But still, when we are thinking about using OCT angio in our everyday work in a glaucoma clinic, we have to still solve some answers. So what is the influence of the, of the blood pressure and the intraocular pressure in the diurnal variation on the flow maps? What is the influence of dilating the pupil with these substances we use every day? What is the influence on the antiglaucomatous therapy at all with beta blockers and other substances, carboanhydrase inhibitors? Um, how does the choroidal perfusion change juxtapapillary? And how good is our um, method in the reproducibility and what are the matters of image quality? And of course, in the papillary area, projection artifacts by the large retinal vessels, and of course, issues with the segmentation in the optic disc. So that concerning OCT angiography in glaucomas, we still have a lot of work to do and a lot of research to do. So thank you very much for your attention.